That's the man that I'd like to see get the nomination because that I feel that he has the high qualities that we need in running the big business of our government of today. You really think he's got a chance this year? If the convention deadlocks, I'm sure that he'll be made choice of for the nomination. If the convention deadlocks, now who, uh, if it does deadlock, who will it be between? It will deadlock be, it will be between Simonton and Adlai Stevenson. I mean, who would be the two front runners that would force it into a deadlock? Would it be Kennedy and Johnson deadlocking? Yes, it would be Kennedy and Johnson deadlocking, which would cause them to seek uh, elsewhere for someone to uh, untie this, de this block. Do you think the Oklahoma delegation would, could be uh, budged from Senator Johnson? Uh, on the first ballot, no. Mr. Stone, who's your man this year? Well, I'm for Lyndon Johnson. Do you think he's got a chance? Well, I really do. I think he's got more of a chance than some of them wants to give him credit for. Do you think that there'll be, uh, that the Oklahoma delegation will go for Johnson? Seemingly a majority and under unit rule surely will, at least the first time. Do you think there are enough other supporters to qualify that endorsement, that is, uh, to uh, apply some conditions to the Kennedy, to the Johnson supporters? Well, I think so. I think it's a good effort, a good try, and very worthwhile. Why do you support Johnson? Well, I think he's probably the most capable man because of his experience in the Senate, plus the fact he's a liberal type individual that could represent all classes of people. Do you think the, that he would, or has he indicated that he would go along with your organization's ideas on uh, farm subsidies and, and getting the government out of uh, the farming business? His record in the past has proven to be along our line, and therefore we feel confident he'd be a big help to us as president. Marty, who do you think is going to take the take it home this time? Well. Uh, there's no way of telling who will take it home. I could tell you who I would like to see take it home. All right, let's start with that. All right, my personal uh, preference ticket, if I were uh, able to name it, would be uh, Stevenson and Kennedy in that order on the ticket. But who will the, but do you think the Oklahoma delegation will still go with Johnson? I think the Oklahoma delegation definitely will go with Johnson and stay with him uh, perhaps quite some time if Kennedy does not get the nomination, of course, soon. Well, now, why, why would... What would be the strategy behind such a move? Well, I think that uh, Johnson will have to be the holding operation. Uh, it seems to me that uh, Kennedy is close to getting the nomination, uh, but if he doesn't get it on the second ballot, I think he's in deep trouble and would have a small chance of getting it. I think that uh, the forces trying to stop Kennedy will have to rally around someone, and I believe that someone will be Johnson, and I believe that will be true of those of us on the Oklahoma delegation. I personally would prefer Stevenson as a nominee, but I will stay with Johnson uh, as the holding operation uh, because it'll have to be someone pitted against Kennedy. But Kennedy still then seems to be the central figure. You are either for him or for anyone else but him. Is that what it boils down to? Well, that isn't what it boils down to with me. I, I personally think Stevenson is the best qualified man. So at least at the outset, I am for who I consider to be the best man, and that it, to me is Stevenson. But uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm against Kennedy. There are others I would, uh, 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 or it, I'll put it this way, I would, rather see Canada, Kennedy get it than some others who are running. Who are you for? Well, I'm for Lyndon Johnson. Do you think he's going to take it home with him? Yes, sir, I sure do. Do you think that they can hold the Oklahoma delegation for Johnson through the first ballot? Absolutely. Why is Johnson your man? Well, he's more experienced, and I think he's just the man for the job. Thank you. That's good. Excellent. Thank you very much, sir.
Senator Cobb, who's going to win in Los Angeles this year? Lyndon Johnson. How many ballots? Third ballot. How are they going to keep the Oklahoma delegation for Senator Johnson? I understand there are a lot of people who like Senator Kennedy or, Senator, uh, or Governor Stevenson, some other people. I've heard of nobody for Kennedy other than the chief executive of Oklahoma. Well, we've, we've heard that there were some other. All right, give me a chance to win. Well, now everybody... Uh, uh, there are a lot of people saying on Los Angeles that you just can't stop Kennedy. He's got it all wrapped up. What do you think? Well, I haven't uh, gotten to Los Angeles yet, but I still have all the confidence in Lyndon Johnson's organization and the people throughout that are for Lyndon Johnson. Well, do you think that the Kennedy bandwagon is a little inflated? I certainly think the Kennedy bandwagon is inflated just as it's been uh, to some extent in Oklahoma. I've seen some Oklahoma polls where Kennedy had some votes, but I haven't found them yet personally other than the chief executive of the state of Oklahoma. What would be your dream ticket? What's your dream ticket? Who would you like to see running for president, vice president? I would like to see Johnson and Symington. Why did the governor go out to Los Angeles early? I've been told from uh, liable sources that Kennedy sent for him, thinking maybe if he could line up the Oklahoma delegation, he'd have a chance for the second spot.
on the way out, we heard some delegates grumbling about the fact that they would be in the Alexandria. They had heard that it wasn't a very good hotel, and they expected to be in the best hotel because the Oklahoma Democrats settled up their bill with the National Party right off the bat. Now, what uh, do you tell a delegate when he comes in and wants to know why he isn't over to Biltmore? Well, I'd say that if the delegate would take a good look at the crowd in the Biltmore, that we were much better off than if we had been in the Biltmore. So you know all of the campaigning is going on in there, and you can't get up nor down the elevators. You can't call the Biltmore. The switchboards are blocked. Actually, this hotel, while it's not the best uh, out here by uh, quite a bit, it's centrally located and two blocks from the Biltmore, and I've been here since Tuesday and find it close and handy to the centers of attraction, yet you can get service, and it's uh, livable. Well, I'll then say. you're not at war with, uh, with the national uh, people who made the arrangement. Uh, well, I think this hotel's all right. I'm, I'm not satisfied with the number of rooms they gave us. They should have given us uh, uh, more rooms here. They uh, allotted us only 69, and honestly, we needed 100 rooms. And uh, uh, so it meant that our delegation would be split, and some of them are out at Thunderbird uh, Motel, which uh, is a nice motel, but it's uh, a nearly 40-minute ride by bus. Now, that bus will pick the delegates up here at this hotel and at Thunderbird, and their transportation that way will be taken care of. Uh, we would have been much happier if all of our people had been put in this hotel. Gene, we just got off the plane not too long ago, and we find in the newspapers out here that the governor has said that uh, 10 of Oklahoma's 29 delegate votes will go to Kennedy, and that those people will try to take the rest of the delegation with him. First of all, do you think that there are 20 delegates for uh, Kennedy on the first ballot? Well, if the governor made that statement, I'd say that he's uh, made a statement that he knows to be untrue. This is the Alexandria Hotel, home for the Oklahoma delegation here at the Democratic National Convention. And this is a cork to a champagne bottle, one of 12 bottles of champagne aboard the plane to the uh, National Convention, bottles donated by Senator Stuart Symington. Now, this champagne cork by itself would tell a story to those of you who remember, remember uh, politics in the pre-repeal or Raymond Gary era of Oklahoma government. And yet, even now, it symbolizes the pressures of a delegation at a convention such as this. For one thing, lots of corks are going to pop in the siren song of the City of Angels during about the next week. Secondly, there are going to be a lot of pressures put upon the Oklahoma delegation by the various candidates. Every one of the 1,261 delegates is going to be threatened. This cork kind of symbolizes the pressures on delegates to a convention such as this. First, there's the siren song of the City of Angels in which many pops will Many corks will pop during the next week. Also, there are the pressures on the delegates laid on by the candidates as they threaten, conjole, and try everything they know to sway the 1,520 delegates. 
This particular cork, however, popped during one of the most enjoyable flights I have ever taken. However, it must have been maddening for the pilot, as about 50 to 60 politicians spent the entire flight holding caucuses in various parts of the airplane. One delegate at the insurance desk commented at the airport that you don't need insurance. With all that hot air aboard, the airplane can't fall. Another one said, with all those gas bags aboard, we don't need motors. Uh, another gentleman, when he was served his champagne, commented, we'll be lucky to have ice water on the way home. But most of the delegates hope to have a lot more, specifically two good friends in Senator Lyndon Johnson and Speaker of the House Sam Rayburn at the close of balloting. Win, lose, or whatever, those are two powerful friends. Got it.